So what is the definition of a group? A group is a collection of people who share some attribute, identity with one another and interact with each other. Social groups provide the values, norms, and rules that guide people's lives. These criteria are very important as we will see. Sometimes a bunch of people in proximity might look like a group, but if they aren't meeting these criteria, they would not be considered a group by sociologists. Unlike a group, a crowd is a temporary gathering of people in a public place whose members do not identify with each other and will not remain in contact. A crowd is an example of an aggregate, a collection of people who share a physical location but do not have lasting social relations. Primary groups usually include the most face-to-face -face interaction and cooperation and the deepest feelings of belonging. Secondary groups are larger and less personal. They are usually organized around a specific activity or task. With primary groups, we tend to express a full range of emotions in our primary groups. We wouldn't necessarily be comfortable expressing all of our emotions to just anyone, but our primary groups are intimate and we have a deeper bond than, with them than with other groups, which typically allows us to be more open in these groups. We're closely associated with the other members, such as family and friends. In the case of secondary groups, we usually don't feel a strong emotional tie to our secondary groups. We may share an interest or common goal, but we rarely have deep feelings of belonging with these people. Our classmates may be an example of a secondary group and coworkers may also fit into these categories. Social networks. A social network is a, the web of direct and indirect ties connecting an individual to other people. You and your family, friends, peers, colleagues, teachers, and co-workers constitute your social networks. Research on social networks has shown that indirect ties can be as important as direct ties. So it's not just whom you know that matters, but whom they know as well. Sometimes you are able to make connections through others, which can lead you to friends, employment opportunities, or even a love relationship. A social network is a structure made up of individuals and groups tied together by different types of relationships. Group dynamics are the patterns of interaction between groups and individuals. This includes the ways groups fall, form and fall apart and influence members. Adding or subtracting just one person from a group can completely change the group dynamics. You might think about a class that you've had in which there was a student who had a really unique personality, which could be good or bad. What was the class like when that student was absent? Not having the student there can significantly change the class dynamic. A dyad is the smallest possible group that consists of two members. It is unstable because of the small size. If one person leaves the group, it ceases to exist. A triad, a three-person group, is more stable than a dyad. Conflicts between two members can be mediated by a third. An in-group is a group that a person identifies with and feels loyalty toward. An out-group is a group that a person feels opposition, rivalry, or hostility toward. And a reference group is a group that provides a standard of comparison against which people evaluate themselves. In-groups can be thought of as us and out-groups can be thought of as them. 
Most of us are associated with a number of in-groups and out-groups based on our ethnic, religious, familial, professional, or educational backgrounds. Our reference group might be our friends or family. However, it could also be the mass media. Many people argue that the reason that we see so much over dieting, anorexia, and bulimia, and plastic surgery in young people is due to the media's portrayal of men and women that are so perfect as to be basically unattainable by regular people, yet often serve as the reference group to their audience.